Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Michael Walsh, Commander of the Mississippi Valley Division and President of the Mississippi River Commission. And the members of the Mississippi River Commission are also here. Mr. R.D. James, a local Missouri resident. Mr. Sam Angel. Uh, Colonel Reichling is here and also Mr. Smith from Louisiana. And Colonel Reichling, the commander of the Memphis District. Um, sir, I'll turn it over to you. I also notice uh, Congresswoman Emerson is here as well. Thank you very much for being here, uh, being here, ma'am. Uh, the, the main issue is, uh, is public safety remains uh, the number one issue uh, for, the, uh, for the Corps of Engineers. And as I've been uh, talking to you all, uh, all week, the things that we've been looking at is how much uh, pressure that the system's been under and it continues to, uh, to be under enormous and unprecedented uh, pressure. Uh, the uh, K-Row gauge has gone up about a foot and a half since, uh, uh, since yesterday and it's going, going to continue uh, to rise. We see in a number of areas where the mayors are beginning to uh, evacuate. If you look at uh, Southland and Kentucky, I hear that they're going to evacuate. Cairo has. We still have pressure at uh, at uh, Fulton County levees and further downriver at uh, at Eagle Lake, and as this crest goes on downriver, we're going to uh, continue to uh, to put enormous pressure on uh, under this uh, under this system. So, because of the the pressure that we have, and and also that the gauge is at uh, 61 uh, above 61 and continuing uh, to rise, and we're also concerned with the safety of the uh, of the men and women that we have on the uh, on the levee. And by the way, we have about 150 people that are that are working with our Coast Guardsmen, as well, providing uh, providing uh, safety in that regard. Uh, I've ordered the uh, the district commander to uh, to operate the project, and so I'll have uh, Colonel uh, Reichling talk to you a little bit about that process uh, after I've given him I've given him that order to uh, to operate. Colonel Reichling. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, just to give you a quick update on where we're at in the uh, preparation of the project. Currently on the upper upper uh, inflow portion of the project, we're approximately 80% complete. We expect to be completed roughly around 2100 tonight or 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. this evening, and to expect to execute that project between 9 o'clock tonight and midnight. In terms of the two lower crevasses, uh, outflow number two will be completed approximately 1 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning on 3rd of May. We expect to execute that project between 1 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the morning. In terms of the outflow number one, uh, we expect to be completed by, that, by 10 o'clock tomorrow uh, morning on the 3rd of May. And we will execute that approximately between 10 o'clock and 1 p.m. on the 3rd of May. I would highlight that uh, we, have, uh, we have worked extensively with the Mississippi uh, sheriff department as well as our brothers uh, from the Missouri National Guard to ensure that the floodway is clear and that all proper security has been in place and we will we will double check and triple check those coordinations before any execution occurs thank you and uh, Bart our uh, expert uh... yes uh, we are in the final phases of preparation of the charges uh, our teams are deployed now as the uh, two-component slurry is being pumped into the tubes within the levee. Our blasting teams will be placing uh, standard demolition charges in there over the remaining two to three hours. And with that, we'll run lines back to the initiation point. And upon Major General Walsh's command, we will be uh, producing the initiation phase. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, so we've uh, already made uh, coordination with the uh, Coast Guard. They've uh, shut down uh, navigation in, in around that area. We've also worked with, uh, with FAA, and, and they're putting a bubble around the, uh, the area as well. We've been work working very closely with the uh, Missouri National Guard, and I want to thank you personally for all of the, all of the work and that we've got going on. Thank you very much. But this doesn't, uh, this doesn't end uh, this historic uh, flood. This is just the use of one of the floor, four floodways that we have going on. If you look at the uh, national weather uh, forecasts and what they're looking at gauges, all of the gauges up and down are going to uh, meet record, uh, record levels. I was just looking at uh, Vicksburg and it's going to be five feet above its uh, uh, record flood. 
Uh, so this is not the uh, this is not the end of this. This is just the beginning, where we're going to use this one uh, one floodway as we continue to follow this um, this flood through the uh, through the watershed. In the meantime, General Peabody on the on the uh, Great Lakes and Ohio River, uh, he's going to start releasing uh, water out of the Kentucky Barkley as he's finished uh, holding what he could uh, what he could back. And we're looking at uh, at the uh, uh, reservoirs also on the Upper Miss and we'll be releasing those in coordination with, uh, with General Peabody. General McMahon is also uh, working on the Missouri and he'll be releasing some of his, uh, his flows as well as we put this in operation. Um, all, of the, uh, all of the men and women that, uh, that I've talked to, whether they're bus drivers or, or they're soldiers or they're policemen, uh, boat operators, uh, nobody has seen uh, this type of water in, uh, in the system. This is an unprecedented, uh, unprecedented flood. With that, I'll open it for questions. Major General, this just boiled down to a public safety issue. If you don't do it, Cairo and other towns could be inundated. It's larger. It's larger than uh, than Cairo. It's the entire uh, system in the watershed. Other questions, uh, sir. Uh, were you aware of some overtopping? I'm sure you were. Natural overtopping. Uh, and yes. is, was that? Uh, Yes, we're aware of the uh, of the overtopping, and no, it was not a a factor in the uh, in the decision. The decision again is pressure on the uh, pressure on the system, and the uh, Cairo gauge is 61 and, and continuing to rise. To what extent will this decrease the pressure downstream from Cairo? The other cities that you mentioned. I'm sorry. Say again. To what extent will this reduce pressure downstream? What we're, uh, what we're uh, uh, projecting is in a number of areas, the crest will fall uh, somewhere between three and four feet in some of the, uh, in some of the areas, uh, Paducah, um, uh, Cairo, as we go further down, uh, downstream, it'll, it'll drop between three and, uh, three and four feet. That'll, that'll give effect for a, uh, for a few days, but there's so much water in the system that that will come back, uh, back up uh, um, uh, as it passes down further towards uh, towards Mississippi. And just a quick follow-up: What do you say to the farmers, uh, those who oppose this, and whose land will be flooded tonight? Is this is a this is a, a story of the human dimension, and and certainly uh, it's a it's impacting lots of folks. As you uh, fly up and down the river, you'll see a lot of people have already abandoned uh, abandoned their houses and moved to uh, moved to higher ground. And so it is. Uh, it, it is a heart-wrenching uh, story. I've been involved with uh, uh, flooding for uh, for ten years, and it takes a long time to recover from something like this. If you say the water is going to go back up, does it still? Will it still keep it below the flood stages here? Or will it eventually climb back up and still impact these folks? Right, right now, the uh, forecast is uh, continuing to uh, continuing to rise. So I'm looking to uh, to get about. Uh, two or three days of the uh, of the stage or the gauges to go down, and then they'll uh, then they'll rise again slowly. But you're hoping that in that time you'll get enough dry time to that it'll pay off in the long run. We're we're hoping that uh, forecasts uh, don't show that uh, at this point. We'll continue the uh, continue uh, monitoring the stress that's on the system, and we'll flood fight uh, flood fight where uh, where it's needed. We believe that the uh, it, it, the uh, floodway is going to uh, act as act as designed, uh, but as I'm telling all folks, they need to stay in close contact with their uh, local law enforcement and local safety people. The operation of the floodway will have impacts in this particular area, but this flood will bring uh, uh, Memphis to uh, to record highs. Uh, Crothersville is going to be at record high. And it's going to continue as we go further down to uh, to New Orleans. Probably uh, have operations on the other uh, spillway, the Bonnie Carey, and we're also in discussions on whether the Maganza uh, floodway will be in operation as well. Not uh, not that far downstream. Could you said before that you, when when you open up the spillway, you want to make sure that there's the, during a time when. It, the most bang for your buck. What makes this the most, the most optimum time to open up the floodway? 
Right now, the uh, system is under uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, stress, and the uh, and the Cairo gauge continues uh, continues to rise, and it's just going to continue to uh, to rise until we until we operate it. We're supposed to operate it at 61 and rising, and it's uh, 61.4, and so this is the right time uh, to operate it. Could you go through the time frame again? I'll leave that to uh, Colonel uh, Reichlin. Yes, sir. We uh, expect to be completed approximately 2100 or 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, and then we will we will uh, execute the project between 9 p.m. and midnight. So that'll be the uh, the first execution of the project. Uh, then we'll move down to the southern portion uh, of the frontline levee, and we'll start working. And we're already currently moving that way to start working on the lower end sections, the outflow sections. And uh, there are two outflow sections. We'll work on the most southern one first, and then we'll come back up and work on the northern one per first. The, 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 la the latter one, the most southern piece, will be done uh, in the early hours of, of tomorrow morning. Uh, we expect right now, if everything was to go right, uh, zero one, uh, one o'clock in the morning to four o'clock in the morning. Um, and then the other one, the upper portion of the outflow, would be executed between uh, 10, 10 a.m. and 12 a.m. tomorrow on the 3rd of May. So, Colonel, in layman's terms, the first one will push the water into the floodway and the next two will push it back into the river because you can go through in layman's terms about what the you know kind of why you do what you do when you do it yes sir uh the the first inflow will actually allow the water to pull into the floodway and it, it will basically in layman terms create a lake um that'll give us between and that'll take between 24 and 36 hours to occur at, at during that time, we will execute the two lower portions of the floodway. We will then allow that pressure in the floodway to pass through those two outflows as well as a 1,500 foot gap uh, between the New Madrid frontline levee, or I'm sorry, the setback levee. And then we'll go back into the Mississippi River. Though. That's correct, sir. I will operate yes, at night. Is there a possibility that the No, ma'am. Uh, that that particular section, I'm sorry, is exactly designed to allow that natural over overtopping. But these levees are designed to a project flood design, and uh, they are very good levees. So that that mere overtopping will not start to erode the le levee and allow us to gain uh, the um, 550,000 cubic feet per second flow through the floodway. Colonel, will this operation, or on a general colonel? Will this, can the community that you talked about where you're looking for relief, can they rest easier now? Will they not, do you think they will not flood with this or is there still a chance that they could still wind up flooding in the end? I would say keep, uh, keep in close contact with your uh, local law enforcement and, uh, and, and uh, safety officials. As we uh, bring, the, uh, bring the crest down, it'll be uh, brought down for a, a few days and then the crest will, uh, will come back up and then we'll see where uh, we go from there. So certainly keep uh, in close contact with your local law enforcement. Yes, sir. Is uh, nighttime hours ideal? Would you prefer to be able to do it? Does it make a difference at what time of day the plan is executed? I'd certainly prefer not to uh, not to do it. Uh, it. And if I had a preference, I'd do it in the in the daytime. Uh, yesterday, when we tried putting our so our um, people on the uh, on the levees. Uh, they were out there working when the lightning storm uh, came, and uh, and because of the materials that were working, I've asked them to uh, to come off the levees uh, last night. If we we're able to stay on the levees, we would have a, a daytime uh, operations, uh, but because of the uh, uh, the lightning storm, uh, that pushed this behind a little bit. You can't yeah. wait till dawn tomorrow to do it. No. Because. What is the uh, what would be the Corps' response to the fact that back in 1937, when the last time the spillway was activated, it dropped the river level at Cairo two tenths of a foot for less than 24 hours? Why why would you expect to get three or four feet of relief now when that didn't happen in 37? I think that's uh that's an incorrect story. Next. There was some uh, there was some natural overtopping on the uh, on the front line levee in the uh, in the floodway. Any other questions? Well, 
mostly because the uh, uh, stress on the uh, stress on the system is uh, is continuing, and the K row gauge uh, continues to uh, to show uh, us into uh, almost 60 uh, 63, and so we need to uh, we need to operate it as soon as we have it uh, prepared. Yes, ma'am. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of discussion on that in the uh, in uh, Twitter and, and and other stories, and and I've uh, seen no uh, no discussion uh, from uh, the scientists that that's going to happen. If we if we've known for a long time that the crest was going to arrive at 61.5, or it was it was projected at 60.5, why have we waited to this point to operate the plant? We're looking at it to, uh, to operate the floodplain when it got to 61 and and uh, and rising. Uh, if you look at the uh, forecast two days ago, that's that shouldn't have happened until uh, until Wednesday. And so we're uh, making a deliberate process as we went through each one of these discussions. And the rain so rainfall we had uh, had last night had a lot of local uh, impacts on that gauge, and that's why we're able to, we have to move that uh, up further. Have you had any injuries or casualties with your four? I can't speak for the Missouri National Guard, but uh, none from the uh, the core employees. We we take uh, we make number safety our number one priority, and and that was mainly the reason that we stood down last night was because of the severe thunderstorms and lightning strikes in this area, and I did not want to have my people out there uh, at risk. Colonel, is everyone out from these 300 plus homes on the Missouri side that you know of? Or are you still getting people? I'm gonna out? I'm gonna defer to Colonel Hagler on that question. Specific instructions to make sure that everyone was out of the floodway. We completed a sweep of the floodway. That floodway sweep is complete. Everyone is out. Uh, we only escorted one person out of the floodway this morning. So again, uh, as we uh, operate this floodway, this is just the uh, just one of the uh, the four that we're uh, that we're looking at. This is a historic flood. Uh, there's water in places that people have never has never seen before. And this is not going to be over when uh, when we operate this. This is going to go on for uh, for many weeks. So I'd ask you all to uh, to be prepared for uh, for that length as we follow this uh, this crest. Uh, well, it hasn't crested yet here. So as we go through the crest from here and we bring it on down river. Thank you all for uh, for being here today. Commissioner Jones, you think you might operate ones farther downstream as well? Yeah. Uh,